Kenneth Bowles was present at the creation of computer science on the UCSD campus. In 1965, he helped Henry Booker create the Applied Electrophysics Department, CSE's great-grandfather, and Bowles used so much computer analysis on his projects in radio astronomy that he was appointed to lead the university's first computer center. Then in 1974, he was introduced to the LSI-11 produced by Digital Equipment and packaged by Terek. It was just a keyboard, a monitor, and a little disk enclosure with the CPU in it, which is what we would recognize today as a PC. But it was brand new packaging at that time, very revolutionary. Ken jumped on it and said, uh, well, the Pascal that's running on the Burroughs 6700 in somewhat experimental mode uh, can be transferred to the LSI-11. And once it was, and you buy a bunch of these PCs, put them in front of students, now you've got a computer lab. By the time Demchak joined the team in 1977, Bowles and a fast-growing group of undergraduates, along with grad student Mark Overgaard, had already built the pseudocode operating system and UCSD Pascal, an evolution of the Pascal programming language, to run on the LSI-11. And it grew from initially uh, five people before my roommates got into this, uh, and maybe into 10 by the time I joined, and by the time it was all over, maybe 43. Between late 1974 and 1980, the UCSD Pascal project changed the course of computer science education and made UCSD itself one of the early brands in computing. But with the growing dominance of MS-DOS, UCSD Pascal began to lose ground. The undergraduates, however, scattered to other institutions, bringing UCSD Pascal's DNA with them. One undergrad ended up at a startup called Apple. Bill Atkinson, uh, who I think was one of the single-digit numbered employees at Apple, he took that and put it on uh, the Apple II and sold it as Apple Pascal. Despite UCSD Pascal, however, there wasn't much programming going on in the early days of computer science at UCSD, or indeed anywhere. If you were lucky, you, you turned in a deck of cards into a computer center and you came back the next day and you got your, your output. You had to be very careful when you punched these cards because you, it wasn't instantaneous feedback. It, you had to really think about it. In 1975, Burkhardt helped a team of students build a computer of their own, but it was early days. The computer had no disk drive. There was just some main memory. I don't remember how much. And main memory at this point in time was core memory. At that time, the department was just Walter Savage and Walter Burkhardt, and the joke was to get a job at San Diego, you had to be named Walter. <laughs> Early leaders in computer science on campus came from differing backgrounds. When I did get hired at UCSD, I was the only person who actually had a degree in computer science because uh, Walt Savage had a math degree, uh, Walter Burkhardt had an EE degree, T.C. Hu had a math degree, and, uh, and I, I don't know what Ken Bowles did, but I suspect he had some kind of physics degree anyway. The Applied Physics and Information Science, or APIS, department was created in 1968, but as early as 1972, faculty including Ken Bowles and Walter Savage urged UCSD to create a separate computer science department, but nothing happened. T.C. Hu joined the UCSD faculty in 1974. He recalls what he heard on his very first day from the then chair of what was the APIS department. As a computer is, is like a washing machine. Very soon, we will know everything about the computer science. If we uh, establish computer science 10 years from now, every contest in the U.S. will try to you know, delete that computer science department. Then in 1978, APIS became the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department with the somewhat unfortunate acronym EECS. There were maybe three or four what you might call golden eras for computing, but in between there were, there were troughs. And there, one of the reasons why APIS changed its name to Electrical Engineering and Computer Science was because um, it was in a trough and people were worried about losing positions in the department because of the 
fall in the number of students. Former engineering professor Erwin Jacobs in 1981 established one of the two first endowed chairs at UCSD, stipulating, however, that it should go to a professor in a not-as-yet-formed Department of Computer Science. My recollection is that we were doing all the teaching, teaching the large classes, and the electrical engineering faculty were, in fact, benefiting from this, able to hire more people because of the student count, body counts in the department. Here we were, four people, five Cunning Ken Bowles. We ran a complete computer science major, undergraduate. We didn't have a master's degree and PhD. We taught all the courses. When Walter Savage stepped down after a long stint leading the computer science group in EECS, he urged Getting Walter to Burkhardt to take the job. The I told Walt that I would do this only if the campus would let us form a new department, a separate department. The formal proposal from the engineering school finally went to campus leadership in December 1986, and the deadlock was broken when Chancellor Dick Atkinson strongly backed a new department. The Computer Science and Engineering Department was formed in 1987. When the time did come, you know, to separate, we all had a choice whether we wanted to go with the new department or stay. In the end, 18 faculty members signed on, Thanks to the empty chair endowed six years earlier by Irwin and Joan Jacobs, the new department was able to recruit a big name, Stanford's Christos Papadimitriou. The faculty brought with them some 200 grad students, including San Diego-born Andrew Kang. He had joined the computer-aided design group of T.C. Hu in 1985. At the time, I was his one student, and... Um, yeah, he hasn't had a lot, he didn't have a lot of students over his very long academic career. The launch of the new department coincided with growing student enrollments, which allowed the department to recruit 17 more computer science faculty between 1987 and 1991. We also had this rule of thumb that we always tried to hire people that were better than any of us who were here. In the late 1980s, attention turned from building a department to building a reputation. But at that point, we were not ranked very highly, and one of the reasons was we'd never had um, uh, a big NSF research infrastructure grant to uh, really build up the uh, research facilities of the department, uh, and we didn't really have um, much presence in systems. And so one of, one of the things we decided to do was to go for both of those. By 1989, a concerted effort led by Professor Joseph Pasquale resulted in a major NSF infrastructure grant for the Active Web Project. However, it took another decade to put in place a strong systems and networking group, starting with the arrival in 2000 of Stefan Savage and Jeffrey Volker. Jean Ferrante chaired CSE as the department was hiring to keep up with student enrollment. And the School of Engineering overall um, over a period of about eight years, we hired about 60 men, and we were minus two women. And this was just shocking to me when I realized what was happening, and I was partly responsible. Ferrante became associate dean of the Jacob School itself in 2002, and she worked with groups such as Women in Computing to get the word out to potential hires. Since then, CSE has hired Beth Simon, Tiana Rosing, Y.Y. Joe, Christine Alvarado, and Kamalika Chaudhry. Ferrante herself and her husband, Larry Carter, were hired from IBM in 1994 as full professors. It's really a reality of today that um, many more academics are married to academics. And, um, you know, if you think about it, you're in graduate school, you're um, very focused, and those are the people you meet. They were neither the first nor the last couple recruited, Fan Chung Graham and Ron Graham in 1989 and 90, and more recently Ranjit Jala and Kamalika Chowdhury. Others like Lurit Bradley and Gus Oot met inside the department. They fell in love. You cannot prevent that. <laughs> Going into its 25th anniversary year, the Computer Science and Engineering Department's faculty was largely unchanged in recent years, 
but the department was facing the highest enrollments in its history, over 2,000 undergraduates and over 300 grad students in the fall of 2013. Whether it's Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg or whoever, I mean, CS is a very cool thing to be studying. I think that's fantastic for the field. Increased student enrollment will translate into more resources to grow the department in growth areas. And thanks to a large anonymous gift from a CSE alumnus, part of the Inspiring Imaginations campaign, CSE is on its way to becoming a top 10 computer science department, potentially propelling CSE graduates to becoming the next Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg.